Welcome to the Personal Trainers Who Care podcast. My name is Catherine Marion, and I am a personal trainer and manager for Free From Fitness at our Wellington location. And I will also be your host as we get to know another member of our incredible team. Here, we share the stories of our personal trainers because at the heart of every fitness business is a passionate individual who cares about changing lives and helping others reach their full health potential. This podcast is a production of Freeform Fitness, a boutique style personal training studio with six locations across Ottawa, Canada. Here, we hire the very best personal trainers. They are ambitious, hardworking team players who know how to get their clients results. Our trainers provide expert personal training services in studio and also online, and every program is tailored to the individual needs of the client. If you would like to know more about Freeform Fitness, be sure to visit us at freeformfitness.ca. Today, for the 17th episode of the Personal Trainers Who Care podcast, we are going to talk to Anna Gurr. She's a personal trainer at our Glebe location. Anna has been with Freeform Fitness since May, and aside from her personal training expertise, Anna also has an artistic side that I can't wait to find out about during our chat today. Welcome to today's edition of the Personal Trainers Who Care podcast. Thanks for joining me, Anna. Thanks so much for having me. Happy to be here. Now tell me, did I pronounce your last name correctly? Yeah, it's a uh, girl. Yeah. <laughs> I was just checking, like, you know, I've been calling you Anna. I've never had a chance to, you know, get your last name out there. So yeah, it's there definitely an interesting last name. I get that a lot. So no worries. If you have any questions, <laughs> happy to answer them. <laughs> Love it. All right. So I want to start with this artistic side you've got going on. What's that all about? How did that start? Yeah, I've been pretty much artistic since uh, I can remember. I really enjoy an independent work. I like to paint. I like to draw. I've been doing it since I was a kid. It's kind of just stuck with me um, into adulthood. So yeah, I'm a very creative person. I went to college for photography as well. So I've always had quite a creative side and the pandemic definitely helped me hone in on a lot of those hobbies and maybe right. some new ones. Because uh, I had a lot of time at home at, at one point. <laughs> but, you know, not only do you do this for yourself, but you're also an art instructor. What does, what does that entail? Yeah, so um, I teach adults, families, kids um, how to paint mostly and uh, do clay work. Um, so I love teaching, which kind of overlaps with the, uh, freeform personal training. Um, so yeah, I just have a knack for talking with people, making relationships is something that I love doing and I'm good at, and I'm happy I can kind of put my passions out there in two very cool jobs that I enjoy. Okay. So is there, cause you talked about clay, you talked about, you know, drawing, painting, you talked about photography. Do you have a favorite form of art or would you say like they're all phenomenal? Yeah, um, that's a great question. I, I think um, I can't really choose one. Um, if I had to, I, I do enjoy uh, drawing a lot. Um, it's something that I started out with doing as a kid and it's just kind of stuck, like I, like I said. <laughs> so yeah, I think um, just sketch work is kind of my favorite thing. And uh, I'm, I have ADHD, so doodling really helps with mental health as well. Yeah. So yeah, I would say sketching. <laughs> and so when you talk about sketching for you, is it like one of those fancy pencils or do you like color? Oh, I usually, I like black and white. I'm very partial to just like those nice uh, pencils. I have used just like whatever I have though. I'm not very like fancy or anything. Yes. Um, anyone can do art. Uh, everyone's an artist. It just takes practice and patience. So um, yeah, if you have a pen even lying around, you can be an artist. <laughs> awesome. You yeah. also mentioned that you teach all age groups. Do you have a preference? I know you probably can't say that, on, you know. You know, right. <laughs> but I'm like, you know, let's say tomorrow they say you can only teach teach one group, adults or children. Which one do you think you choose? Uh, I think children. Children yeah. are they have such creative minds. They um are not really bound by like any, I don't know, rules or restrictions. So um that creativity really does come out. Their ideas are just phenomenal. I enjoy connecting mm -hmm. um with that as well and just seeing how that artist is still there because over time as adults we kind of lose the little artist inside of us and it's nice to kind of um mold that for the future generation and uh yeah art is always something that's very human and important to uh us as humans <laughs> i love that so yeah. what you know we 
what do you think all of this brings to you? Like you've done it for so long. You mm -hmm. never gave it up. You're reminding me that I gave it up. I did, you know, <laughs> I did art for the longest time. It was charcoal yeah. was my favorite. I'm like, you need to go back to that. Anyways. Yeah. What do you think this brings to your life? Like this, this artistic side, plus, you know, it's an output for you because you also yeah. teach it. What, what does that bring to your life? Uh, it brings a lot of clarity. Um, it's a way to slow down. Like you said, most of us lose it. Uh, there have been periods in my life where I have lost it as well because we get so caught up with, you know, responsibilities and uh, bills and everything else that we're always thinking about. But this is a way to de-stress. So adding this to your life adds quality to your life. It adds creativity. Um, for me, it's a great way to just slow down if I'm stressed out or anxious. It's very, very valuable work for sure. Beautiful. Yeah. So, you know, the next logical question is how do you go from art to personal training? Yeah, <laughs> that is a logical question uh, <laughs> for sure. I think um, art has always been a part of my life. So I don't really think of it as flip flopping. Uh, teaching is something that's very kind of has the same foundation uh, as personal training. So that's been kind of fun to put my kind of teaching gears on for both jobs. Um, yeah, I recently got into personal training and it's something that uh, I've been very passionate about. Um, I'm a fairly new trainer, so I'm very excited to be in such a great industry with such a great career path in front of me. Um, I am just excited and grateful, really. For so what is it that life. brought you to what is it that brought you to personal training? You know, what is it that sort of, thought, OK, this this might be a good fit for me. Yeah. Um, uh, when during the pandemic, I had a lot of time to think. I had a Did lot of time. To, yeah, yeah, a lot of time just to reevaluate kind of where I was. And I looked in the mirror and I didn't like who I was. And I had um, not just gained COVID weight because I was uh, I was obese before COVID, but I had time to really think about new habits forming a new me kind of. So I started going to therapy. Um, and then it kind of just spiraled from there where I started eating better, lost my first 20 pounds and just kept going. Um, so then I decided to start working at a group training facility for fitness because I, it was one of my goals to get active. It was one of my goals to be, you know, around exercise. And when I took a step into that industry, I realized that this is somewhere that I wanted to be permanently because of the community, the energy and the job itself. So I was very inspired at the time I was working in sales, but I was inspired by the coaches and the trainers that were there. And I wanted to do exactly what they were doing. I wanted to help people. Ultimately, I've always been passionate about helping others, but I didn't know how until uh, very recently, actually. <laughs> That's such a great story. I, thought, I bet you that, you know, your own personal journey because you can communicate it so well with others. I'm, I'm sure that's very inspiring. I think a lot of times, um, and you know, I'm sure that you've seen this already in the short time you've been with Freeform Fitness. I know that we all have. People come in and they, they're not sure that we can connect with what they have. And certainly I don't know what it's like, for instance, to have a hip replacement. I don't know what that feels like. Yeah, absolutely. I've worked enough with it that I know, you know, and I work with, you know, our, our clients, their doctors, their physiotherapists. So I know, you know, how to help them get to where they want to be. But when someone comes in and says to you, you know, or they come in and, you, and they t tell you, I need to, you know, to lose some weight. I, I, I yeah. need to help. When you tell this story, you must have an instant connection with them. Yeah, even if I don't tell the story at first, because I'm mostly focused on the client, of course. Um, but even I just know like where it's coming from. I know how hard it is to, even to step through the door. Um, the first thing I like to do when we have our initial consults, which is something we do with Freeform Fitness for those that don't know, is that we have a consultation with uh, everyone. We go over your goals and what you want to do. And I say uh, to whoever it is that's looking to lose weight is you did amazing just by showing up today. Um, it is a journey. It, a lot of people want quick fixes. This is not the thing. This is a lifestyle. It doesn't stop, right? Uh, but yeah, I do have an advantage where my perspective is, I know what you're going through in your, in your head, right? Um, so yeah, there is an instant connection there. And once I do tell people, I, there's a hope as well, because I mean, if I can do it, then what's, who's saying that you can as well? You said something really important there and I sort of just jotted it down. Yeah. Said, I know what's going on in your head. This is so true with people that, that are at home watching us right now and they know that they need this. But mm -hmm. There's this dialogue. Isn't there a dialogue? That yeah, and it's absolutely. like, it's almost, it's like if we could just 
<laughs> mind it for a moment. Yeah. Maybe get, and I'm not saying they're not going to make it here, oh, but no. they might yeah. get here quicker if we could, right? What's that dialogue like? It's a, it's kind of a negative script, isn't it? Right. Um, it's something that we kind of, it's actually evolutionarily there to keep you safe for real. Um, because you in, let's say we we're in the wild, uh, a bit like a thousand years ago. Um, we're not going to go for the hard thing. <laughs> we're going to go for what's comfortable because that's how we've survived. So you're actually going against evolution every time you do something very discomforting. Yeah. Um, so that's why it's really hard for people to go against that voice. That voice is there to keep you safe, but there are no giant cats after you anymore. <laughs> There's right? The, yes, exactly. <laughs> you're okay um, to kind of, you know, tell that voice to quiet down, but it takes a lot of practice and it's going to be there still. So um, what I like to do in my personal life is do something very uncomfortable every day. Um, right now it's been running. Running is incredibly uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> in which way? Um, just that voice comes up. So you have to really know why you're there. You have to have answers to these questions before you start. Um, you have to prepare yourself before you start running can be, you know, if you're doing it for a long time, there's always going to be a part of you that says, why are you doing this? And do you really need to do this? And you have to have the answer to that question if you want to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. I hear, you know, it's interesting. I hear that same voice when I'm on a long bike ride. So if yeah. I'm doing something like over 50 kilometers, mm -hmm. oftentimes, you know, it's oftentimes it's a big loop. And I'll get to a spot and my brain will say, you know, you could, if you cut over here, you could get home quicker. And, oh, then yeah. I, and then I've got this other voice saying, why are you saying that to yourself? And I wonder, like, I enjoy cycling. I enjoy going yeah. long distances. Why does that, why does that pop into my brain? It's so interesting, right? So, yeah. so whether you're a personal trainer, you know, and I'm sure, you know, athletes, we hear it all the time, but it's, it's one of those things that's, that it's not just you. Isn't that what you, oh, no. it's not just you is what I want to tell everyone. Yeah, no, it's uh, everybody that has a brain and a pulse is also going through that. It's just practice and really just you have to stick with it. So if someone, you know, you look at someone that's like, oh, wow, I really want to be that physically active. Well, they're going through it every time as well. They're just more in tune with why they're there. Yeah, that's really yeah. interesting. So, you know, we're talking about um, you becoming a personal trainer now. And so you know, you've been there for a few months. What's your, you know, what's your impression so far? What are some of the things that, you know, that, that are, that have really been striking you? Yeah. Um, freeform is really unique because there's such a uh, foundational and core uh, movements that we do teach people. Um, I'm certified with cam fit pro. Um, so it only goes so far, right? This job is very like you, are, you have to have a growth mindset because you're always learning new things. There's so many exercises out there, but we do 30 minute sessions. So how do you get the most out of 30 minutes with your client, right? So I've been learning so, so much about compound movements, which is something that works multiple muscle groups. Um, so we get the best out of, you know, those 30 minutes. Um, that strike me as different uh, than most gyms, um, as well as how there's not a lot of equipment in free form because we're really focused on, you know, using these movements that we might use in day-to-day -day life, kind of getting back to, um, these core movements that you know we know as children and then we lose along the way so I find that's very fulfilling and uh, therapeutic actually to watch people grow like this yeah that's really awesome yeah. mm -hmm. um, now you just started so you've got your personal training certification you mentioned I saw in the notes that we you know you and I were sharing that yeah. you're hoping to you know the next thing that's that's on the top of mind for you is perhaps nutritional and yeah. or functional training. Why do you think those two things would be important for you? Yeah, uh, nutritional would be definitely on the top of my list. 80% uh, um, of weight loss is nutrition. 80% of, you know, um, most of our goals is nutrition. So uh, exercise is incredible. Exercise is going to maintain that weight loss for you. Exercise brings you endorphins and mental health help and you feel better physically. Nutrition is a huge factor of that equation though, right? So, I mean, if any other knowledge I can get under my belt there, it just helps, it will help my clients more and help myself more at the same time. Uh, 
we all have a good idea of what we need to do. It's just kind of putting it in motion, right? Yeah. For most things, that's what the hurdle is. Um, but yeah, anything else I can learn, um, I'm kind of like always looking to learn more stuff. So certifications are a quite exciting prospect of this yeah. job. And it's like that for all of us. I mean, all of us yeah. at the Home Fitness, each one of us, that's sort of our thing. We, we even have in-house um, uh, workshops along the way, yep. so just because all of us are so you know, in tune with knowing that we need to learn more and things change. Oh, yeah. so what was working in the 90s, the early 2000, you know, things change all the time. Yeah. So for us to be able to stay, you know, ahead of the game and, you know, offer the best services for our members, I think that you, you're right, you know, learning is, is yeah. crucial for all of us. It really, really is. And I love how uh, our staff has an audible that we're continuously learning on, we have access to. Um, so I've been deep diving into that and <laughs> just trying to get my hands on any knowledge, any education that I can, because yeah, it's like you said, it's constantly changing. Um, we're constantly learning more things about the science around uh, physical activity and you know what will work best with uh with just general population it's yeah. uh it's always going to be something to look into i'm going to put you on the spot you just said that you've been listening to some audibles and you're sort yeah. of you know what's when you think of something that you heard or read or listened to recently that you're like wow that really stuck out as a like an aha moment yeah that's a great question actually um right now i'm reading actually a book by a clinical psychiatrist um, the book is called How to Do the Work. Um, so it's all about kind of recognizing your own patterns and how you can grow and heal from them. Um, I recently found something that was incredibly interesting, uh, a new concept I hadn't heard about before, but it's called neuroplasticity. Okay. Um, so when previously we thought that the brain at 20 just stops kind of developing, um, it's not true with new foundings showing that neuroplasticity is, um, it's all about your environment. It's what you're feeding your brain. So we do have even the capacity now to kind of alter our patterns, alter our thoughts, alter our habits. Um, so it gave me a lot of hope for not just me, but also clients, because I remember being told as a kid, you know, when you're 20, like your brain's done <laughs> growing, like this is going to be you, mm. but uh, it's, it's not true. So neuroplasticity is definitely something that I just learned about and very intrigued and interested in for sure. Super interesting. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Very, okay. very interesting stuff. In the um, document that you and I shared before chatting today, you mentioned that it was really important for you to talk about mental health yours yep. and in general and so yeah i'd love to you know with your permission you know i want everybody to know that, that i've asked you this beforehand <laughs> i'm not throwing this out at you mm -hmm. um you know to talk about that today so so you know wherever you want us to take us your you know your struggles yeah. what they were how they affected your life and you know and and good or good or and or bad yeah absolutely no i'm an open book i think talking about this um, topic can sometimes be taboo, but I, I don't think it should be. Um, we need to fight the stigma and, you know, maybe by sharing my story, I could also help other people that feel the same way. I know like when I was younger, I would have wanted someone to talk about it more. <laughs> so I'm happy to see that with, um, you know, pop culture and the media today, we are shining more of a light on this because, you know, it's, it's a part of our body. It's a part of our physical health. The, the mind and the body are not separate. So, yeah, uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, I mean, I can just start off by saying that I've been diagnosed with uh, severe depression, uh, generalized anxiety as well, and um, also ADHD. So uh, I have a roster of things that I've had to <laughs> navigate in my life. Um, exercise definitely saved my life, though. So. I, I read that in your notes, and I thought that's both um, fascinating Mm -hmm. And I can see how, and I also think it's really beautiful that, that there was yeah. something that, that was available to you that made such a big difference. How did that happen? Yeah. Um, like I was saying during the pandemic, like definitely had a lot of time to reevaluate kind of where I wanted to be and where I was at. Um, just didn't like the way that I felt or looked. So I knew that a change had to kind of happen. Um, I, I guess, um, just uh, going to therapy really helped too. So I'm a big advocate for therapy. I think uh, if you have a brain, you should go to therapy. 
uh, a lot of people think that we have to wait for this huge catalyst in our life or like a, a horrible um, scenario to happen for us to go to therapy, but it's, it's not true. Just processing our emotions, um, just feeling out even why we do the things that we do is very fascinating. So yeah, I'm a huge advocate. If you have the means to go to therapy, definitely go. If not, there are tons of resources that are free yeah. as well. Um, yeah, I have tons on my own uh, social media, just uh, different resources for people. I think it's incredibly important to just talk to people. For That's sure. really beautiful. And, you know, I think we often, sometimes people think of exercise as just a, a, a one lane thing. You get exercise yeah. to get fit. Yeah. But like we've talked about already, you know, in, in the, the minutes that we've been here, it can be everything from recovering from an injury. We briefly talked yeah. about hip replacement is something that I work a lot with. You know, it, it, for some people, it's being able to, you know, keep keep up with their grandkids. So we've got a lot of senior citizens yeah. train here. But then, you know, go to the other side. And it's also a mental health. Yes. You know, it can be a mental health booster to come yes. into the gym and work out. You'll get all the other benefits, right? Oh, yeah. You might get some weight loss. You might get some definition. You, you know, you might feel stronger, faster, you know. But there's this, a, a portion of it that is so healthy for the mind to be able to yes. move in that in, in any which way you can, right? Absolutely. I think, uh, yeah, it, anything that you're doing with fitness can really help like so many things. Like it's such an umbrella um, of things that it does affect and help, especially mental health, because before we we thought that the mind and the body were, were separate. Like there are tons of studies like that are older that show that, but it's not, mm -hmm. it's not like that at all. If you're not well somewhere, you might feel it physically elsewhere. So um, the, our thoughts have so much impact on, you know, everything on our bodies, on the way that we carry ourselves throughout the world. So uh, yeah, exercise is, is a, a time where you can de-stress. You don't have to have depression to kind of have, you know, stress and benefit from exercise, right? We all have a significant amount of stress in, in the world today. And just with how things are going, just, you know, we live high pa paced lives. So um, just carving out 30 minutes, an hour to yourself every day, every maybe two days you're coming is very helpful um, because that's time for your, yourself, that's self-care. So um, when we do things like this, it kind of gives us a sense of that we're worthy. We give ourselves this time because we're telling ourselves, you know, like we deserve that too. We deserve that time. Everybody does for sure. And the beauty of coming to Freeform Fitness is there's no thinking. All you got to do is show up and we'll do all the thinking for you, right? It's we'll have your great. workout planned. It's geared towards you, towards your goals. Just do what we say. <laughs> yeah, no, it's so true because a lot of people, I know me, myself included before, you know, I was a personal trainer. Uh, if I was trying to get, you know, in shape, I would go to the gym and I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't have a plan, right? Um, we have plans for you. We have plans for you, not just when you're starting out with us, but we have plans and ideas of how, you know, we want to progress with you. Um, so that is the best part of it is that you're, you don't have to think, you just have to show up. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. So we're talking about how um, working out was, was very helpful for you, for your physical yeah. health, but also your mental health. So what are your favorite workouts? What do you, what, do, what is it that you love to do most? Uh, running is my favorite. Um, Isn't that funny? Because you just said the, the, your brain is always telling you to stop oh, yeah. doing that, but here you are vocalizing, running is my favorite thing. I love it. I, it is a chance for me to triumph over that voice. Love um, it. I love that. That's yeah. so amazing. Yeah. So every time that I complete it, I've won already and I do it in the, the morning. Um, so it sets up my day very nicely. I actually run to work and I did a 6k this morning. Um, so amazing. Yeah, it is absolutely my favorite, even though there, <laughs> there's a love hate relationship at times, <laughs> but you know, every time I do it, I'm telling myself that, uh, I don't have to listen to that voice and it's rewiring my brain at the same and you're time. Worthy. Right? You're worthy of that work. Yeah. Right? Like you deserve it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it shows me, Hey, if I can can do this then I can you know do the rest of my day as well and uh I had one point in my life where I couldn't get out of bed you know so this is this is huge, huge. and uh That's beautiful yeah acknowledging that as well is very important because we often regress and we're like 
well, that's not a big deal that I did 6K this morning. Yes, it is a big, a big deal. deal. Yeah, in a whole, you think of where you were before and where you are now, if you're consistent, magic, just magic. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so you yeah. love running. Is there anything else that you enjoy? Yeah. I love strength training as well. I mean, at Freeform Fitness, we're focused on resistance training. Um, I've been working on getting up to deadlifting my own weight. Um, stay tuned. I am sure I will get there soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to have part two to make sure that, yes. that you get there. Um, I sure will. <laughs> so, you know, we talked briefly about this before kind of organically, but, you know, what was it like when we didn't have access to gyms, like yeah. during the pandemic, right? We couldn't... We, yeah. A lot of us didn't have things at home. We just, there was just, what was that like for you not being able to sort of work out or lift things while we were closed? Yeah, incredibly challenging for me. I, I assume for everybody else as well. It's something that, you know, we, it becomes a part of our routine. When our routine is disrupted, then we feel, you know, out of control. Um, there are always things you can do. It might not be the same, but we have to be adaptable. So, yes. yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, maybe the gyms are closed, but maybe you have some weights at home. Maybe you can order some off Amazon, like we all did yeah. <laughs> for months and months. You know, you have to think of a solution. There are options there. Yeah. Um, you just have to kind of open your box there and, and think of more things. There are, there are always things you can do. Amazing. Okay, well, now that you've been at Freeform Fitness for a few months, what are some of the biggest things that you've learned so far? You know, what are the things yeah. that kind of stick out from your time at Free Farm? Yeah, definitely the functional training. Those core movements are very interesting. But not only that is just how uh, witnessing clients like get better and feel better has been the most eye-opening, the most rewarding part of of this job. And that was what I was hoping for when I was getting into Free Farm and and just personal training in general was to know like have lasting impacts on people and it's been working so <laughs> I mean that is just priceless is seeing someone you know that might have a shoulder mobility issue is now able to like lift weights above their head mm -hmm. that is phenomenal it's like physical therapy um and it's just it puts me in awe every time I see people just improving that's so awesome yeah so let's say somebody's listening to us right now and they're really inspired by you and they're like, okay, I think that, you know, I want to train with Anna. Is there anything else you'd like them to know as they're trying to make this decision? Yeah, absolutely. I would say if you're thinking about it, it's time. I would say um, it's going to be hard at times. Sometimes you'll love it. It'll be easy. Other times you, you'll want to quit. Just be prepared for it. And as long as you keep getting back up, you're unstoppable. As long as you're resistant, you got this. That's amazing. You're ready. Yeah. I love that. That should be a logo on our, on our t-shirt. I know. It might be a bit great. long, but we should get we should get some made. Something. I love that. That's awesome. Okay, so let's go back to you in a little bit. You now we know yeah. that um, you enjoy running and you, you know that you enjoy art. Are there other things that you really love to do on your downtime? I know cooking is in there somewhere. Yeah, I like uh, trying new recipes. Definitely something that got me started with weight loss was just trying to, you know, tweak what I was eating, paying attention, being mindful um, to what I was eating. I remember actually, I don't know if this is off topic, but when um, I was very overweight, I would eat in front of screens and I wasn't really sure like if I had eaten, like I was just so like disconnected from myself, from, you know, what I was consuming that I didn't know. And, you know, I had to ask myself, well, why am I eating this much? And then therapy helps with that, of course. Um, but yeah, just uh, figuring out your patterns, becoming more present with your food really, really helped for me. Um, so I, I think that's without... really big. I think that's something that I talk about a lot as well. Yeah. Because if you're not paying attention yeah. and you have a bowl of something, of a snack, <laughs> you're just going to keep going because you're oh, yeah. not paying attention, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's called the uh, mind fog eating. So you're just doing it like maybe you're at a party or or maybe the waiter brought chips to the table and you're just going at it but you are not being present with what you're doing um so now I eat for the most part I eat without screens it definitely helped me a lot 
Um, there are the odd time where like my boyfriend and I will go to a movie and I eat popcorn, of course. It's balance, right? It's um, That's all that's yeah. what it's all about, right? Yes, absolutely. And I have a lot of clients that are like, really great at logging their food but they're like oh I had a small bowl of ice cream like you're allowed to have a small you're allowed to have ice cream if you are craving it get it out of the way so you can think about you know your life (laughs) um it is okay it is all about balance it is all about kind of you know doing the things that we like in moderation of course amazing perfect okay so I have a few rapid fire questions for you are you okay. ready? I'm gonna throw these at you. Let's see if you can come up with an answer real quick. All right. Okay. So, what's something that you know now that you wish you knew when you first started personal training? Yes. Okay. Um, so this is for people that might be interested in becoming a personal trainer. Um, you have to be incredibly passionate about it, or else it's not going to work out. Because when you start, it is rough on the finances. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, you have to just keep going. You have to. And if you're, you know, if this isn't what you're completely invested in, completely passionate about, it's not going to work out. You need to eat, sleep, and breathe personal training for this to work out. Love it. Yeah. What about beginners? What is the first skill you like to teach beginners? Uh, definitely. Uh, form form just proper form we yep. want to get that one checked off on the box because um, with that we can progress into different uh, movements that follow the same form right if your form is good then we can keep going so that is definitely the first thing I teach anyone awesome and finally what do you believe is your most valuable coaching skill that could be uh, more yeah adaptability uh, is okay the best one that you can have it's um you know maybe someone needs to reschedule be adaptable be flexible uh if maybe you design a program for someone and they can't do the movement be adaptable have a few different ideas on hand for it personal training is incredibly adaptable because we need to think of you know not one size fits all here so be ready for the unexpected and have two backup plans (laughs) Love it. Absolutely. And yeah. you're, that's so true. It's so very. Yeah. True. Uh, okay. Well, listen, I, you know, I can't even believe we've been talking for almost, you know, 40 minutes. It's so really, amazing. yeah, I know wow. you're so, you're very, I, I love it. You're very, you're very full, you're full of knowledge and full of life. And, you know, it's <laughs> been, it's been such a treat. Um, so thank you for joining me. If people want to follow you, if they if they want to know more about you, where can they see you on your social media? We'll add it at the end of this. I'm just going to put this in once we're done, but just right now, um, where can they find yeah. you? Um, I'm mostly active on my Instagram. I'm working on getting a website. It's coming, but <laughs> for now you can find me at Anna J. Gurr, that's G-U-R-R on Instagram. I post lots of content about mental health. I post content about uh, fitness and also food. So feel free to follow me there if you want to see what I'm up to. And if they want to see you live and in person, you're at our Glee location. Correct. Yes, I am there. Uh, Happy to meet you. Yeah. Love it. Awesome. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. That was such a great conversation. And while you're here, I'm going to thank everybody at home for watching and for listening. And um, be sure to check out our past podcast to meet more of our fabulous members. And while you're there, you can subscribe and you can like, you can even leave comments. We always like to respond to those. And uh, yeah, that's it. There you have it. That's the end of my conversation with Anna. Thanks again, Anna. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking with you today as well. Thank you. And we'll see everybody next time. Bye-bye.